Hey everybody, Blundmaster here with another tutorial, and today this is going to be another quick tip. I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a chromatic aberration node inside of Blender. And if you want to learn how to save that so you can use it in every single scene that you're working with, I have a link to a tutorial in the description below for that as well. So let's take a quick look at this node group here. It's very simple and easy to use. You can sort of see the effect in the background. This may a little, be a little bit extreme for the scenes that you're working with, so I'd recommend a value of like 1.5 just to get that extra added realism to any scene. If we take a look inside of this node group, you can see it's not very busy. There's only six nodes, so it's super easy to make. So let's jump into Blender and get started. First thing we want to do is switch over to the compositing layout. And I'm going to check Use Nodes and Backdrop and press Control up arrow to make it full screen. I'm going to delete this render layer node and add in an image, which I made. And I'll press Control Shift and left click to add in a viewer node. So the main reason that people add chromatic aberration to their scenes is it adds some slightly more realism to their scene. Because if you were to take a picture with a digital camera, there would be some distortion in the red and blue channels. And so to recreate that in Blender, we need to separate all the color channels and transform just the red and the blue. And luckily, if we press Shift A, under the Converter section, you can see that there's a way to separate the red, green, and blue channels. There's also a way to combine them. And so if we just connect all of these like they should, you can see that essentially nothing has happened because nothing has been distorted yet. So the image is just like it was before. But to distort the red and blue channels, we're going to press Shift A, add in a transform node right in between the red, and press Shift D to duplicate it and add it in between the blue. Now I'm just going to box select all of these and press Ctrl G to make it a node group. And I'm going to create a socket for the X values. I'm also going to create one for the Y inputs and I'll create one for the scale inputs as well. The reason I'm not creating one for the angle input is because when you deal with chromatic aberration you almost never see anything with the rotation. It's mainly caused by a shift in the position or the scale. So let's tab back out of that node group and rename it chromatic, whoops, chromatic aberration. I hope I spelled that right. And if we change the values to, let's say, 5 by 5, we zoom in, we can see that we're not getting the blue and red distortion that we want. It's more purple and green. So the main reason for that, if we tab back into this node group, you can see that both the red and blue channels are being transformed by the same amount in the same direction. But what we actually want is for the blue channel to be transformed in the opposite direction of the red channel. And we can do that by adding in a math node and switching it to multiply and setting the value to negative 1. And then if we press H, it'll just collapse it so it's nice and small. We can press Shift D to duplicate it for our other input. If we tab out, you can see that now we're getting that nice blue and reddish distortion. Now this is a little too much, so I'm going to set it to 2x2, two two. and yeah, that looks much more realistic. And some artists like to use chromatic aberration as a stylistic effect, but when they do that, they usually have the center of the image nice and clear, and only have some slight distortion in the edges of the image. So if you saw my previous tutorial where I showed you how to create a vignette node, we can actually use that node as a mask for this scene and we can use it so that we only have our distortion in the edges and our original image in the center. So let's just plug in the image into the input, tab into this node group, and for the last multiply node we just want to disconnect this uh, bottom socket because otherwise it would actually be adding a vignette to our scene but now it's actually creating a black and white spherical gradient which we can use as a mask. So let's press Shift A to add in a mix node and we can use this as a factor. We'll take in our distorted image and plug that into the top. We'll take our normal image and plug that in the bottom. And you can see that everything in the middle is nice just like the original image but if we look at the sides you can see there's some of that distortion there. 
If you want, you can increase that maybe a little bit more, 2.5 by 2.5. And yeah, so that looks pretty nice. If you want to save this image, you can just press Control down arrow to escape full screen mode. And then just switch this to viewer node here. You can press F3 to save it. I'm going to save it as chromatic aberration test. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.